I'm getting ready to start a double page layout and I'm going to be scrapbooking some pumpkin patch photos. And this is the herbs and honey kit layout kit that we have in our shop from basic gray and it comes with instructions. Now, if you follow the instructions, um, they'll be a little bit different from what I do. Um, but typically what I do will save you paper. So, um, in the instructions, they want you to use a full sheet of this brown and then put this stripe on top of it. They're actually the same sheet, so if you cut it, um, the strip, then you can put them on a piece of cardstock. And I have this um, cardstock, which I ended up with a lot of somehow, that I don't actually like the color of at all and will never use. And I am going to use it like this. This is also a good way to use up. Uh, pattern paper that you don't like anymore. You can use it as layout bases and conserve pattern paper that you do like. So um, I'm just going to go ahead and adhere this down. And then I'll adhere this piece on top of it, or above it rather, not on top of it. And this way I save some paper. And this is a really nice collection. It's one of my favorites. Uh, and I really like it. So I want to keep some after this. All right. So on to the second side. It's the same deal over here. They want you to use uh, this whole sheet, but you actually are going to use this sheet later on in this same layout to make a tag. So I just made the tag first, or cut the paper for the tag, and now I'm going to take what's left over and glue it to the base. And then I can conserve some of that. So instead of using a whole sheet plus part of a sheet for this layout, I only use I use one sheet. So that gives me a whole sheet left over. And then this one, I have uh, three about three quarters of a sheet left. Whereas I would have only um, about a third of a sheet left if I had followed the instructions. Okay, so there we go. So that's how the layout is starting to look. That's our layout base. And so let's just keep continuing on with our project here. And now that we've got our base going, we're going to start doing some embellishing. And I have pulled all the stickers that we'll be using on this project um, from the sheet already. And I have them all laid out here on a piece of pattern paper, or wax paper rather. And this is one of the green border stickers from the 12 by 12 sticker sheet. And I'm going to adhere this on the white. And I'm going to center it side to side because it's not quite 12 inches. All right, and for your next step, you're going to add a um, half inch strip of scallop paper uh, or of the yellow paper from the collection and it's uh, striped on the other side and you're going to add it up top here to the corner or to the orange piece here. Now I find it's a lot easier to cut the scallop and then cut the paper and I've done one already, but now I'm going to do the second one so you can see how I do that. C 
So I have a scalp punch here from Stampin' Up. Other companies that have scalp punch are American Crafts, uh, EK Success, Uh, Fiskars also has a scalp punch. Um, I probably like the Stampin' Up! one the best. And then the American Crafts and then the Fiskars. Um, but they're all pretty much the same. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut this so that I have a half inch strip. And I'm going to add a 1 8 inch piece of tape to the back. Since I'm not sure if it can hold a quarter inch piece of tape without trimming, and it's not such a heavy piece that it even needs a quarter inch. So I'm not going to worry about that. And I'm just going to go ahead and use a 1 8. And I'm just going to put this piece here. Again, placing it on the orange. And by placing it on the orange, it'll line up with the orange on the opposite side. There we go. And so that's the base of the layout. Okay, so uh, we're going to move into some of the embellishing. And um, here we have uh, two paper bags from the collection. This one has a flap that um, is designed to kind of be closed. So I'm just going to open the flap and we'll adhere it in the open position. And then I'll show you how when you put these in a page protector, you can still get your memorabilia in and out of them. So I'm going to go ahead and adhere this down. And I'm going to make sure that I put adhesive on the flap so that the flap will stay in the open position. And I think I might be using the wrong bag. Um, yeah, they actually want you to use this bag, um, but I like the larger bag and the smaller bag together. So I'm gonna keep using this one and I'm going to put it just a little offset, not too much. One of the reasons why I like the larger bag, um, to be honest, is that um, it looks less like the two bags are sort of floating in outer space since this one is now connected, it's tall enough to connect to these layers. So by placing it so it's partially on these layers, this all is unified. So I like that a little bit better. Now, um, you have a two and three quarter by four and three quarter inch piece here that's designed to go in this bag and you're gonna turn it into a tag. So what I'm gonna do is I just take a tag. I have a stunt tag that I keep on my desk. That's kind of always there for whenever I want a tag. I just use it to cut the edges. And then what I'm going to do is just line this up so it's centered like so. Flip this over and then I'm going to use an office punch, quarter inch hole punch to just punch out this hole. Okay, and then that will go in there. And if it's nicely in there. Now, I like it when tags have a hole reinforcer. So I'm going to punch one. And I'm going to punch from the um, orange and brown paper. 
that we used earlier. And the first hole I punched is the quarter inch hole. And I'm actually going to go ahead and punch two of them. And then I take a small hole punch, like a 1 8 or so. Or not a 1 8 inch, <laughs> so much as um, 1 half inch is what I meant. Get this out of its packaging. So I need a new one. So then you're going to take your half, one half inch punch and you line it up so that the center of the one quarter inch punch, the, the hole is centered. And that way, you know that it's exactly centered. It's a lot easier to do it this way than it is to um, get your um, one quarter inch hole centered in the middle of that small piece because you're going to be trying to hold on to a one half inch piece while you're doing it, and that's going to be a little tough to do. And then I'm using a glue called Best Glue Ever, which starts as a liquid but dries as a glue dot. And I'm just putting little tiny glue dots all around the hole so that I can then Just place that right on top. And that actually looks much better that way. So now I'm just going to take a piece of twine and add that to my piece. And I'm actually using a true hemp from Hemptique. This is our metallic crafting cord. Um, we have this in the shop. I'll put a link in the video below. And this is a really, really nice metallic uh, dark brown. So it works wonderfully with the colors of this particular collection. And now our tag has a nice string on it. So we're going to continue on with some embellishing. And I'm going to be layering some stickers at the top here. And this one is going to go on foam tape. I'm just kind of looking through it to see where I need to place the tape. My tape is a little bit long, so I'll just peel it back and trim it down. And then I can just put smaller pieces on. Now, before I adhere that down, I'm going to adhere this Farmer's Market sticker. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this in the place where ultimately it's going to be so that I can slide this piece under it. Okay, and then this green circle is a piece 
of the other one. So I'm just going to place it down. roughly where I want it and I might be too far over because I didn't use the green circle I used this one which was I need this one to come up so I can move it so I'm using now a product called undo it's a temporary adhesive remover it will temporarily make adhesive not sticky so that you can remove a sticker and then um, you can always put it back after so um, yep so I'm just gonna let this dry and then I'll be right back alright so now I'm gonna take this green piece and use it to position this one this oval and then this has been kind of put down and peeled up a couple times so I'm just going to add a little bit of liquid glue to it so that it'll stick down a little bit better And then we're going to, it's a layered sticker where it's concentric circles. So I'm going to fit this one back into it here, like so. And then this one will go on pop dots, which we already added before we had our little snafu. I'll just give it a little dimension, make it more fun. And then there's a strawberry, and there's actually a red strawberry and a pink strawberry. And we're going to use the red strawberry. And go ahead and add that to the sticker, and then we'll put a piece of foam tape underneath it so that it doesn't get compressed in the album. And there we go. Okay, looking good. So that's up there. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add this piece, this green label here. And all these stickers are from the 12 by 12 sticker sheet, which comes in the kit. And we want to position this so that it's straight with the bottom of the layout and that it overhangs the bag on the left a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to mark with a pen the two points where I want to cut off the end and then I'll just give it a snip and then I'll be able to just tuck it under there and I'm going to put a little foam tape under the end of this as well because um, I don't want it to get a little like have a bump from where it goes up onto the tag or not the tag, but the, the paper bag. But what I'm not going to do is I'm not going to lift up or remove the tape backing. So this just looks like it's kind of floating. You see the dimension from the shadow there. So that gives that a nice look. All right. So um, now is a good time to add our photos. And I have some pumpkin patch photos here. And they're going to go on the left side. And I just want to make sure I get a good mixture of poses here. Or I 
and I'm going to have them go up and down a little bit. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to adhere them one at a time, starting with the one that's most underneath. And by leaving you know, the three in position, when I adhere each one, I can get their positioning just right. And I don't want them going up and down that much. You know, we're just going to do a little bit because that way it'll look a little bit more natural. All right, so there we go. Got our cute little pumpkin patch photos over there. And we're going to start adding some uh, twine over here in a few places. So I'm actually going to remove this so that I have a little bit I can center this so you can see it a little bit better. And you want to get like a mouse pad or something like that. And what we're going to do is we're going to punch a hole that's kind of like along the edge of this bag. But even with this piece. And then um, we're going to punch a hole here through the end of this so that we can put a piece of twine through it. And I'm going to, um, I'm going to go and um, get a needle because it's a little bit easier for me if I have a needle. All right, and we're going to go down through this hole and across the back and up through this hole and then tie a knot and you want to tie your knot right about here at the where the two bags where the bag and the label meet. And you don't have to tie a bow, just a simple knot will do. And I'm going to trim my string a little bit. And we're looking good, guys, looking good. Now I'm going to take my date and add it on top of the string. So I'm going to use a liquid glue for that. And I'm actually going to use glossy accents since I'll be adhering my letters on onto a label, which is kind of a shiny surface. So I'm just going to do that. I'm going to start with the last letter. And I'm going to hold it in place until it dries, uh, which should be about 30 seconds at the most. But you want to just make sure that it's really well stuck down because, again, it is on top of this string. So it's not ideal 
uh, situation to be glued down. So I'm going to um, cut the video here and finish the rest of the letters and then I'll be back. All right, so we're going to do some more embellishing and the next thing we're going to do is we're going to make a garland to go on the left side of the page. But before I did that, I realized I needed to trim this side of the page. So what I'm going to do is just flip it over and I'm going to line a ruler up with the edge of the cardstock. And then I'm just going to take my rotary trimmer and run it along the edge of my ruler so that when I flip it over that's flush at the top there and not hanging over the edge. So we're going to put this here and we're going to put this here and we're going to punch holes on either end of the photos so that we um, can hang our garland and it'll look like the garland is hanging from the photos. And another decently long piece of twine. And I'm going to use that same brown metallic twine that I used previously. And I'm hoping these holes are fairly large. So, yep, I can just get that right in. So I'm going to stick that through. And then I'm just going to take a piece of scrapbooking tape. Um, you can also use washi tape. Actually, washi tape was closer to me, so I'll use washi tape. And this will be the start of our garland. So I'm now going to pull this piece off. And I'm going to take Scotch Quick Dry and I'm going to put some on my fingertip like so and I'm going to twist it through the end of this string. I'm going to let that dry for a minute um, and clean it off my fingers and what that's going to do is um, that's going to harden and then I can use that like a needle So while that's drying, I'm going to show you um, these pieces here. Now, these are all stickers from the collection. Um, I have a J and a K, which uh, this is a good way to label who's in the photos. So you can have the initials of the people in the photos. Um, that helps label your, your pictures. And you have a couple things you can do. You can remove the stickiness with a baby powder or a an anti-static stamping bag or something like that. Or you can just back them with cardstock so that they're not sticky anymore. And I'm going to do the cardstock backing because that will keep them from, that'll make them stronger for when I go to punch them and string them. So I'm going to get another sheet of that cardstock that I'm not too enamored with. And I'm going to stick my stickers down. Now any stickers that have a straight edge, I'm going to line one of the straight edges up with the bottom of the cardstock or an edge of the cardstock. That just saves me a little bit of time, makes them easier to cut out. And all of these stickers with the exception of the letters, can be found on the 12 by 12 sticker sheet. Now the letters are in a separate um, package. They have their own packaging.
and they're one of my favorite letter fonts that I've seen in a while. It's a really, really nice letter font. Now, as for my strawberry, it doesn't have a straight side, so I'm just going to fill it in. And I'm going to do the same with my letters. I'll just fill them in. Okay. And then this little piece you can, if you want to save it to use on another project, you can stick it on here. And that will enable you to save it from another project because it won't be sticky anymore. Now, when I cut something like this out, I pre-cut them into smaller pieces because I find it is a lot easier to handle these pieces and get an accurate cut if this whole piece of um, cardstock is not flopping around. Some people say not to do that because then you're just cutting twice, but I find that I can be much more accurate if I do take the time to do it, so I don't really think of it as cutting twice, I think of it as part of cutting. So I'm just going to cut a couple of these. And when you're dealing with a lot of straight edges, it's nice to use a big pair of scissors because then you can do one cut per side. When you open the blade and start a second cut is when you can get you know little hang tabs and not a straight and not as straight of an edge. Now a piece like this is a little bit trickier because you have to cut in from one direction on each of these pink edges and then you have to come in from the opposite direction to cut them out. So, you know, it takes a minute. But you still get that nice clean pink edge there. So I'm going to turn the camera off and finish cutting the rest of them out and then we'll continue with making our garland. Okay, so now all of my pieces are done. I can start working on stringing them. And I'm just going to use a hole piercer. You could use a hole punch, but the holes don't need to be quite that big. I like the one from We Are Memory Keepers. All right, so then the second thing that you can add to your garland in addition to stickers and letters, so I guess the third thing, is you can also add pattern paper pieces. So just take some of the paper from the collection. This one's a nice brightly colored stripe. And you can string it on here. Now the letters might be a little hard to pierce. Let me see if my small hole punch will go through there. Yep, that was better. So I used a 1 16th inch hole punch. Yep, 
and just get them on the string in the beginning. And then once they're on the string, you can worry about um, arranging them. It's a lot easier to arrange them after they're all on the string. And then there's this piece. Now, this is a great piece to add a date stamp to. So let me get the date here. I've got my date. And then I'm just going to keep adding my stickers. Add my next letter. And then I'm going to add another piece of pattern paper, I think. So, you know, I have to figure out how low I want it to hang, and this is about as low as I want it to go. So once I know how low I want it to go, I'm going to secure the back with another piece of washi tape. And now I can start arranging them and getting them on here exactly the way that I want them. And then once I have them exactly the way that I want them, I can adhere them with foam tape so that they look right. And so that's a pretty good garland. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take small pieces of the foam tape and put it on the back. Okay, and I'm going to work my way in from the edges. So I've done that. Now I'm going to just make the strawberry my middle piece and do the strawberry. on the circle. And the last is I just need a little small piece on my J. 
And do the K next. And then we've got those two pieces. So I've got my nice garland there. Happy there. Happy little garland. Okay, so there we go. So now that I've got my garland, there's just a couple finishing touches and then we will be ready to go. So I'm gonna take these two pieces and I cut out, I got over rambunctious. <laughs> when I was cutting out my stickers and I actually cut these out and they didn't really need to be. But that did give me the idea of layering them with the label. To make a nice little cluster here in the corner. And that looks good. And my page is finished. So let me get the other side so you can see the final layout. So now all you need to do to finish off this page is you've got your photos there. Just add journaling to your tag. And then if you have memorabilia from your event, you can put it in this larger pocket. And then when you put this in the page protector, you just make a slit in the page protector right here and right here so that anything you stick in the pockets can be pulled out through the page protector. And that's how you deal with a page that has memorabilia pockets like this. You just make a slit in the page protector right over here. And then this goes in so that it's sticking on top of the page protector so people can pull it in and out. So that's it. Thanks so much for watching. Bye now.